Hello guys, so today we are going to discuss regarding the adverse effect of amino glycosides. So uh, this is your uh, kidney and uh, we have two important parts in the kidney that is the cortex and the medulla and the nephron which is the functional unit of the kidney is distributed across this medulla and cortex so uh, if we are going to see a closer look on this medulla and cortex so we will find uh, so many nephrons are distributed around the medulla and cortex so this is the closer look of your renal medulla and renal cortex so in cortical nephron which is the most abundant nephron in our uh, body human body this cortical nephron most of the parts of the nephron will be on the renal cortex and some amount will be in renal medulla and you know that most of the absorption will take place reabsorption will be takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule because the cells the epithelial cells of the proximal tubule has a special structure this is finger like projection known as uh, microvilli and this whole structure is known as brush border due to presence of brush border and microvilli the most of the reabsorption will take place in the proximal tubule so one of the most uh, common uh, adverse effect of taking amino glycosides is the renal toxicity about uh, 8 to 26 uh, percent of patient under uh, amino glycoside treatment will develop this renal toxicity if the amino glycoside uh, treatment has been going on for several days so after taking several days of amino glycosides this amino glycosides attain high concentration in this cortex area renal cortex area and from this renal cortex they will uh, start diffusing inside the proximal tubule and accumulate due to the presence of breath water so they will accumulate here due to the presence of breath water because breath water will increase the surface area so if the surface area is increased automatically there will be more places for binding of these uh, amino glycosides and once they will be accumulated in this uh, epithelial cell they will start damaging this epithelial cell of proximal convoluted tubule so once this epithelial cell is damaged the some of the enzyme which is present in the brush border okay some of the enzymes which is present in the brush border like beta d glucosaminidase alanine amino peptidase and alkaline phosphatase will be coming out from uh, the breath border into the plasma and uh, later on this will be followed by your mild proteinuria and the appearance of hyaline and granular casts and uh, after several days uh, the glomerular filtration rate is also reduced and you can see a mild rise in the plasma creatinine in uh, clinically and uh, this is how the amino glycosides will cause uh, renal impairment renal toxicity and uh, generally this renal impairment is almost and always reversible because the proximal tubule cell that is the epithelial cells have the capacity to regenerate and uh, this uh, toxicity of amino glycosides is directly related to the concentration and the duration of the therapy that is the long duration of the therapy means uh, more uh, nephrotoxic it will be and uh, uh, therefore this uh, high dose extended interval dosing approaches are generally preferred to reduce the nephrotoxicity of the amino glycosides at the same level of the total drug exposure than the divided dose approach okay that means that uh, we can give a high dose uh, 
when compared to the divided dose we can give a high dose and for extended uh, interval for extended period of time so this will ultimately reduce the nephrotoxicity of the aminoglycosides and uh, among the aminoglycosides neomycin uh, having the greatest degree of nephrotoxicity and streptomycin has the least uh, degree of nephrotoxicity and other drugs like amphotericin B, vancomycin, angiotensin converting enzyme, cisplatin and cyclosporin have the potential have the potential to increase the action of aminoglycoside induced nephrotoxicity. So while taking amphotericin, uh, while taking amphotericin or vancomycin or ACE inhibitor, we should not be taking the aminoglycosides. The next adverse effect of the aminoglycoside is the autotoxicity and unlike the nephrotoxicity, the autotoxicities are generally irreversible in nature. So here is the structure of your inner air and uh, this structure is like this is the semi-circular and then we have cochlea and vestibule round window and oval window this vestibule lies between the semicircular canal and cochlea this uh, cochlea is uh, responsible for hearing okay this is responsible for hearing the vestibule is responsible for equilibrium brim of the body so the hair cells which i have depicted in green color in the cochlea and the vestibular region are very important okay so this uh, problem in this hair cell and uh, neurons present in the cochlea will you uh, will be leading to the hearing loss this uh, aminoglycosides can enter the inner air either by systemic uh, route or by topical pathway in the systemic pathway, aminoglycosides uh, will pass through the blood bar uh, labyrinth barrier and, and then it will enter the inner ear, whereas in the topical pathway, it will, uh, uh, it will bypass this uh, uh, blood uh, labyrinth barrier and it will enter directly through the round window. So this is the uh, round window and aminoglycosides will directly enter through the round window into the inner air and uh, once they are inside over a long duration of period they will get accumulated in the paralymph and the endolymph and then there in then here they will start once they are inside so then they will start uh, producing free radicals and uh, they will also overactivate the NMDA receptor and due to which this uh, no, uh, this uh, hair cells this hair cells will get degenerate and also this neurons neurons present in the cochlea region will also get degenerate due to which there will be loss of hearing and balance and this uh, nature of the autotoxicity is generally it may be irreversible bilateral high frequency hearing loss or vestibular hypofunction so high frequency uh, hearing loss means the person will be unable to hear the long distance sound okay if the person is talking from a long distance he will be unable to hear but he will be able to hear the nearby person's uh, voice and uh, the half-life of this aminoglycoside is five to six times longer in the aortic fluids inside the inner air okay than in the plasma and therefore this aminoglycoside will stay for a longer time in your inner air okay and uh, drugs such as your etracrinic acid uh, are potentially autotoxic potentially increase the autotoxic effect of the aminoglycosides 
and uh, different drugs have different effects on the equilibrium balance and the auditory function for instance your streptomycin and gentamicin are predominantly produced vestibular effect like uh, they will create problem in the equilibrium and the balance whereas uh, the amikacin kenamycin and neomycin will primarily affect the auditory function that is the hearing loss and the aminoglycosides such as your tobramycin will create both type of problem like it will have it will create adverse effect in the vestibular or in the your cochlear region and uh, if uh, the cochlea is generally affected if there is a cochlear toxicity so first the symptom of cochlear toxicity will be your uh, high pitch tinnitus so the person will be unable to hear the high frequency range okay and then the later on the lower sound ranges are also affected and the other symptoms of autotoxicity may include headache which may last for one to two days nausea vomiting difficulty with equilibrium vertigo in upright position and inability to perceive termination of movement and difficulty in sitting standing without visual cues and the person may also experience ataxia so this uh, autotoxicity along with nephrotoxicity is the uh, main adverse effect of the aminoglycosides other than that we have some neuromuscular blocking action of aminoglycosides and uh, some allergic reactions to aminoglycosides so this aminoglycosides can inhibit the pre-junctional release of the acetylcholine and also reduce the postsynaptic uh, uh, sensitivity to the neurotransmitter so there will be this receptor will this receptor might be affected postsynaptic receptors so sensitivity will be gone in the postsynaptic neuron and this uh, adverse effect uh, may generally cause when high dose of aminoglycoside is infused over a short period or concurrent administration with the neuromuscular blockers since since it has a neuromuscular blocking action so patients with myasthenia gravis are particularly at risk when they are taking the aminoglycosides so uh, this myasthenia gravis is a autoimmune disease where the antibodies are generated against the uh, acetylcholine receptor in the post uh, synaptic neuron so they will destroy this receptor and uh, due to which uh, there will be uh, they will prevent the muscles from contracting this is most often caused by antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor itself but antibodies to other proteins such as your muscle specific kinase protein also can impair transmission at the neuromuscular junction so remember this uh, myasthenia gravis is nothing but the autoimmune disease so I will be not going through this uh, disease. Please go through it. Uh, the uh, very important thing is that uh, calcium Ca2 plus can overcome the neuromuscular blocking effect of aminoglycosides when uh, uh, given IV, when given in an IV route. So uh, this calcium, uh, this calcium. IV treatment is generally preferred for the treatment of uh, neuromuscular toxicity due to aminoglycosides and other agents like acetylcholine esterase inhibitors such as neostigmines have also been used with uh, varying degree of success. Uh, the fourth one is other effects, other adverse effects such as allergy, skin rashes, fever, stomatitis blood dyskaryasis, angioedema, exfoliative dermatitis may also happen due to the use of excessive use of aminoglycosides. 
so with this we have completed the adverse effect of your amino glycosides uh, so I hope you like the video so please do subscribe the video uh, do, uh, and please like the video and do subscribe the channel